They say when it comes to the pleasures of life, moderation is key. Well, if moderation is key, this fur quagmire is the expired debit card that only ever gets touched when you get locked out of your house. Before I even start, because I know how guidelines are, instead of using that three letter word to describe something sensually explicit, I'm just gonna say cooking. This is an anti-kindness, and it's a marsupial endemic to Australia. What those words mean is that it's actually closer to a kangaroo than to a mouse, and it can only be found one place in the world. The land where toilets flush backwards, the landlords have pouches, and the mascots an STD ravaged plush toy. Anyway, what earns the anti-kindness this video is that they take cooking very seriously. They have a short window to mate since their breeding season lasts three months, but they'll only be alive for two to three weeks. Which is why male anti-kindnesses mature faster and are ready to go before breeding season actually starts. Also, they can maximize their time in the kitchen. And once the male finally finds a partner to cook with, Hell's Kitchen suddenly becomes more than just a TV show. The anti kindness will have cooking sessions that can last up to 14 hours. That's like two shifts and an overtime. There isn't even a courting process or anything. No foreplay, not even a two-play. The male just marathons anything with a pulse on sight. And you do not want to know what my search history had to look like for me to know that. And thanks to NordVPN, nobody ever will. Because NordVPN creates an encrypted tunnel for my data and protects my identity by hiding my IP address. Which is probably the only reason I'm not on a list yet. It's gotten to the point where if somebody walks in on me researching for a video, I'm honestly better off switching to the hub. At least that would be easier to explain than a Google search of how much liquid DNA can a blue whale produce. It's like 5 to 6 gallons, by the way. Nah, if my search history ever got leaked, I'd have to change area codes. Which is great because NordVPN lets you change your location and access one of over 5,000 servers in 60 different countries. So if you want to watch Spongebob but can't because you live in America and Netflix ain't with that, just know Australian Netflix got you. Also, Nord servers are super fast, so you never have to feel like you're choosing security over speed. And with NordVPN's threat protection, you can be safe from ads, trackers, and malware. So to protect your data from companies like <laughs> and to get the most out of your streaming services, go to nordvpn.com slash casualgeographic to cop a huge discount on a two-year plan. And with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, it's basically risk-free. Meaning you can always pull out and nobody has to get hurt. Which is more than I can say for this guy. His Viagra gerbil goes on a binge where eating, sleeping, and drinking all take a backseat to the male's goal of multiplying without a calculator. And the male doesn't exactly limit himself to just one partner in the kitchen. Males are able to do this thanks to an increase of steroids in the blood that gives him the energy to cook for so long. While also fighting any other chefs that try to enter his kitchen. But these steroids also nerf the anti kindness's immune system and can even lead to ulcers. In its simplest form, he literally screws himself over. And even though breeding season's three months, about two to three weeks into his cooking banner, the anti kindness is already knocking on his creator's door. By this time, he's dehydrated, starving, probably sick, and his body's falling apart as the steroids in his blood now poison him. The constant high levels of testosterone means the stress hormone cortisol never gets shut off. Eventually, it reaches toxic levels that destroys the anti kindness from the inside as it now bleeds out internally. Like a kid with allergies, the male literally dies for and by the nut. Also, this all happens before the anti kindness is a year old. Meaning in about one trip around the sun, his future children will be experiencing post-acorn clarity in the past tense just like him. Now you're probably wondering how evolution didn't go ahead and patch this nonsense out. Well, one, the anti kindness already has a low lifespan, with males having an expiration date of about 11 months and females being lucky if they live long enough to see two birthdays. So it actually makes sense for the male to invest everything to knock up as many females as possible if he's going to be dead by the next season anyway. That way, he has a better chance of passing on his genes even if it means he flatlines before Father's Day. And even though he ghosts a mother in the most literal way possible, she actually has a better chance of raising his children if there's one less male around to take up extra resources. But the anti kindness isn't the only animal on that kind of timing. Squidward is a lot of things, and one of them is a virgin. We know that because if he wasn't, he'd likely be dead. Male octopus had been recorded falling into a catatonic borderline in the neighborhood of dementia-like state shortly after mating. Specifically, the male giant Pacific octopus will stop eating and lose weight. Not in like the cutting for summer kind of way, since octopus don't store body fat, instead they'll metabolize their own muscles to stay alive. Without food, the he octopus is a perfect candidate for infection as his immune system folds on him just like his will to live. Often these males start having white lesions appear all over their body. The end game is the male either starves to death, gets ripped apart by a predator, or gets factory reset by a fatal virus. Sometimes his date will cut out the middleman completely by hashtagging him herself by strangling him. And not in a fun way either. Speaking of the mother, once her nursery of eggs finally hatches, it won't be long before they both link up in the afterlife. And you would think pulling a hit and quit on life would be a great way to get your entire population subtracted by evolution, but there is a trade-off. The anti kindness and the octopus are both semoparous. The Sparknose version is semoparity means you get one chance to spread your seed and reproduce and then it's curtains. You get one chance to do the most and then you become a Facebook post. 
Samuel Paris animals have way more children, and with the parents all mass uninstalling after they're born, the next generation has less competition to deal with. Samuel parody is why the anti kinds will literally get some and die trying. And why the male octopus has nothing to live for after he cashes in his V card. They actually did this joke on TV, that's crazy. Some octopus can have up to 50,000 eggs, and they only really need two of them to live long enough to keep the cycle going. I mean, hell, Marlon started with 400 of them, only one made it to the credits, and we still call it a happy ending. Another advantage of Semmel parody is that the animals do have a shorter lifespan, but they can reproduce a lot faster. An octopus can be born on New Year's, have a midlife crisis in May, kids in August, and be a hashtag before Christmas. Now that's efficiency. Any octopus three years or older is just overachieving at that point. In comparison, a mother elephant can raise a baby for 10 years and have a clan of hyenas erase all that in 10 seconds if her back is turned. Speaking of which, on the other side we have Iteroparous animals. This is sounding way too much like AP Environmental, but basically what you need to remember is case selected species are animals like elephants, whales, and us. Our selected are the animals that live fast and expire young, like the Antichinus octopus, and another good example is salmon. I showed this picture earlier for a reason. They go on a Hannah Baker mission that ends with half of them either starving, tapping out to an infection that the stress of the jihad causes, or just meeting the business end of a bear. The payoff is they can spawn and fertilize thousands of eggs before they exit stage left. Case selected species are usually bigger, have less kids but spend more time raising them, and for all their effort, they get renewed for many more seasons of life. The R's are smaller, have way more kids but are a lot less involved, and they're usually the ones that get uppercut by evolution. The best example is probably the Luna Moth since, as you already know, they literally don't have a mouth. It's not like they're born without one, nature just snatches it from them when they become adults. They only have about two weeks to live and reproduce, and only survive off whatever energy they stored as caterpillars. Once that runs out, so does their free trial to life. But it ain't all sweet for the K's either, which again includes us. Because there is an evolutionary risk in investing so much time and energy in just one kid. That's a lot of effort for something that can end up just being a walking birth control ad. We tell our kids they can be anything when they grow up, but what happens when that kid decides to be a piece of s***? Not only that, but competition for mating is much more cutthroat for K species. Going back to elephants, mothers can spend over a decade raising a single calf. And that's after being pregnant for 22 months. And when you're carrying a life for a couple weeks short of two years, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure the baby you're carrying isn't 50% scrub. Which is why when a female African elephant's in heat, every eligible male bachelor in the area will run fades with each other. Sometimes until there's one less elephant. And since the female elephant might not be available for another 5 years, down bad bulls will bury each other if they have to. In the end, it's the strongest bull that gets to be the father, which gives the baby the best genetic chance of survival. But it also means some males get blue balled in the process. And probably red pill too. Long story short, whether you're a horny hamster, 12,000 pound white knight, or a cashier with a crotch worm for a nose, life is pain no matter what you are. But it's a little less painful when you're sponsored by NordVPN, shout out to them again. For more consistent content, make sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram since I try to post daily on both. To see videos before anyone else does, be sure to join my Patreon. Other than that, drink water, hug your mother, don't like and don't subscribe because if you really wanted to, you would have done it by now. And have a good one. Oh, and be glad you're not an octopus.